So in this quick guide, we're going to talk about how to make your first WP query um, iteration and basically how to understand what that does. Uh, we're going to use a short code, but it's just for illustrative purposes. So we aren't going to go into depth about that. We do have an old quick guide that I will link about that. So I've got this page which uses QG short code and I'm going to view that po page and I see this post titles coming through. It's got an H3 wrapped around it and basically we're just returning from our short code function that. Now what we're going to do is we want to show the five most recent items from our posts um, content type on this short code. Um, that's, not a, that's a pretty contrived example. It's not likely that you're going to want to do that on your site. But if you do, this is perfect. And if you don't, this should give you some sense of where to start to understand that. Um, so I'm going to be copying and pasting code because I think it's more important to understand the code than to watch me type it. And I can't type very well on this thing. All right. So basically, we're going to do a couple things. First, we're going to do, we're going to create a uh, uh, iter instantiation, uh, an object of the WP query class by saying new WP query, um, and we're going to assign that to the var val variable Q. Um, I recommend highly, highly, as you start to learn WP query, that you familiarize yourself with this page on the codex. It is really, really useful, and it tells you how to do anything. You want to know how to uh, do a query based on post status. This is how you do it. If you want to know how to do one based on um, taxonomies, this is how you do it. It's all built into this codex page, and so this is your source of truth. It's better than anything I've ever found anywhere else on the internet that aims to do this. Um, but basically, in general, for a WP query, you create an array, and you pass it into it, and then it gives you back the stuff. So in this case, I'm going to say I want the post type to be post. That is, I don't want pages, and I don't want portfolio items. I don't want anything like that. And I want post per page. And again, that doesn't link up to this post post type. It's kind of weird. You just get used to it. But I want five of them is what I'm saying. I'm saying five posts per page. So I want to get five posts back. So again, I've put it on this Q object. now. The second thing I'm going to copy and paste is essentially the loop. If you've ever done any WordPress theming, you've probably come across and understood the basics of the loop. And that is exactly what you always use with WP Query. You use the loop to iterate through the objects in the, not always, but 99% of the time for most WordPress developers, you're going to use the loop as your way to iterate through the values that you got back from a WP Query. So, the thing to realize it's different here is that I've got I've named my val my query variable Q, um, and that object has properties that you might recognize have post, have posts, and the post, and those are just the exact same ones that you'll use in your theme files. But in this case, they're methods on an object. That's what this Q dollar sign Q arrow is about. And you don't have to call it Q. You could call it the query. You could call it custom query that gives me five posts. You can call it whatever you want. Um, the, the core thing is you need to use this arrow syntax to say the method on that rather than doing the generic one that will refer to the global query that WordPress sets up for you. So while we have posts in our query, uh, we want to pull them in with the post. And what that does is it makes something available for functions like the title, the content, the permalink. And we're going to use get the title here, which is a, one of those. And we're going to basically take the existing contents of what I'm calling a buffer. We're going to push the title onto that. And then we're going to push a little line break onto it. That's what the BR does. We're going to put all that onto the buffer. And then we're eventually going to return the buffer as we were before. In between there, we do this WP reset post data thing. And that's because we've called the post. And so we've clobbered essentially something in the global landscape for the rest of WordPress to work with. So we reset it by calling WP reset post data. You will forget this sometimes and weird things will happen. And that's why you always want to get in the habit of just always writing WP reset post data in there. So with all this code saved, if I reload the page, I'll see my titles there. I should, if it takes there, there we go. I'm seeing all my five titles, my five most recent post titles. I have not linked them, so I can't like click them and go to them or any of that stuff. But if you've done any WordPress theming, you probably can guess how to do that. You'll, you'll just use a tags and get the permalink and all that stuff. So that's the basics of how to create your first WP query. We happen to do it in a short code, but you can do it anywhere inside WordPress code. Hope that's helpful.